Hello, good evening, and welcome to Black Nificent Media. With me, Kwabna Bibini Berima. Tonight, I'm coming your way live from Swamandadieso in the Western North region with an 80 and a day year old. Yes, so as you can see on your screen, he is 80 and a day year old, and he said he wanted to be 120 before he joined his ancestors. And it is my prayer, and I know he is going to go more than that so tonight in your shot is dr reverend dr Polly aswa an 80 and a day year old man who is so ambitious when it comes to his life on earth and uh, as we go deeper into the interview you'll get to know why he thinks so and why he believes he's going to be more than 80 um 120 years. Good evening, Reverend. My Reverend. How are you doing? By God's grace, I'm How does there. it feel to be 80 and a, a year, a, a day old? Well, to be 80 generally mm -hmm. shows that uh, mm -hmm. you are somebody who has actually committed your life to Christ. Okay. The Bible says that when we obey him and we do his will, we will enjoy our full life. Mm. And the Bible has already recorded that when human beings had confusion in their minds, threw themselves into obedience to the devil mm -hmm. and sin abounded. God reduced the length of years from 960 something more mm -hmm. to 120. Okay. And that is why we are, I am saying that the 120 will not elude me. Mm. I will enjoy and I know my Lord will add even more. Okay. And so we're waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Call it a rapture. Mm -hmm. Until that time, we hope to remain. But if it is the will of God that after completing the assignment he has given me on earth, and he wants to draw me back to heaven. Who am I to say no? Exactly. I will gladly join the hosts of uh, the righteous angels. men exactly. who are with him there. You know, uh, when the first day I came here to tell you about the interview, uh, I said, uh, you're looking younger. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, so uh, let's go into your 80 and a day year old journey. How far have you, um, would you, would you summarize this um, 80 years of yours? And first, before you go into the 80 years, at this age of 80 and a day, do you have regret as a man, as a human being? Well, you know, as human beings, we have the ups and downs. Sometimes you are in a very good mood. And at that time, something happens and you become so sad. You regret having been born. <laughs> but all things work together for good hmm. for those who have loved the Lord, who loves the Lord, hmm. have committed themselves to doing the will of God. Mm -hmm. All things. So I've never regretted being. Uh, alive or in any situation. I only give thanks to God for whatever situation I go through mm -hmm. because the Bible says that a way will be made for us to go out of any temptation or any trouble. Okay. Okay. I, I like the fact that you don't necessarily have any regrets in life. That is nice. So now let's go into your life. Why 
um, you are the first person to establish the first private school in Swaman. What, what, what were the options? What could you have done? But you chose to go into educating people. I started teaching as far back as 1962. Okay, in which school? Uh, in the Sefi area. Okay. A place called Abu Abu. Okay. And also mm. traditional area. Okay. Then from there, I moved to many other places within the Sefi area teaching. I believe strongly that I was born a teacher. Okay. On the very, very first day I went to school, before the day ended, I was definitely choosing the class prefect. Mm. Because I could understand whatever the teacher taught faster than all my mates. Okay. And so I became a leader. When the teacher was not there, I could stand in and teach the, cl the class. Okay. So this went throughout my whole elementary education. Mm. Then when I completed middle school, unfortunately, my parents could not cater for the cost of the secondary school. Mm. And in those days too, our fathers were, were much concerned about the life of their nephews and so on. Mm -hmm. So they attended to them, their needs than attending to their own children's needs. So while my father was caring for his nephews and nieces, mm -hmm. we were left to the grace of God. I had no uncle to care for me. Wow. So the only option was to go into teaching. That time we had to write exams, people teacher selection exams. Hmm. I wrote and by God's grace, I was offered employment. Okay. So I started teaching. Later on, around uh, 1965, I was transferred to the Adia here. I then pre, uh, taught in about three, four schools in the Sefi area before I was brought down to the Methodist Primary School here. Okay. So I started teaching here, and uh, the former MP mm -hmm. and his mates. Even though I was not their class teacher, I was in the teacher of P6. Okay. But the headmaster or the head, yeah, the headmaster of the, the middle school hmm. saw the intelligence I had hmm. and my academic performance and so decided to get me a title him so that I could teach the middle school uh, form for who were preparing for the examination. Okay. Okay. So I was having classes with them, teaching them while they were in form for God being so good. They wrote the items. They passed their parents, could send them to school, they went. I continued teaching for three years before I prepared myself to go to secondary school. <clears throat> the first secondary school I attended was St. Charles at Sopo. Okay. And uh, they used to have a, a, a welcome test. Okay. So the first day at school, Form 1, Form 2, Form 3, I had to write the same paper. Then Form 4, Form 5 also wrote the same paper. 
Fortunately, you know, when we wrote the exams, I was, uh, let me say that I gave a surprise to the staff mm. because I talked to the whole form one, talked to the whole form two, and overtook some of the form threes. Wow. I fell 15 to the number, wow. three classes. Wow. So incidentally, the staff had to hold a meeting on me. <laughs> they held a meeting. Wonder boy. And then they asked why I could do what I did. And I told them of my story. And they promoted me to form three. So I was in form one one day. The next day, the next day I was in form three. Wow. St. Charles? St. Charles. Where, where, where is Sorpon. it? South Pond, okay. All right. South Pond. Mm. And so that was how I went through. Later on, I left St. Charles because I felt I wanted to write my uh, GCE as early as possible. What, what, what was GCE then? The, the, uh, the then uh, secondary school exams. Okay. Uh, final exams. Okay. So I came down to St. Gregoire. Okay. And I wrote the exams <laughs> privately. Okay. Not registered with the school. With the school. Hmm. Because of these exams I wrote privately, mm -hmm. I was sacked from school because it was according to them against the rules. Against the rules of the school. So I was sacked. Wow. Then um, I went to Salem in Accra. Okay. If I want to tell you the number of schools I attended within the three years, hmm. it may surprise you. Wow. Because I had to care for myself. And sometimes I could not get the fees. Mm. I had to sometimes attend uh, to some menial jobs. Okay. So that I could get money, money to pay to my fees. Continue. Mm. Sometimes the whole time I may be in the house working for money. Mm. But God said, Good. Finally, I completed school okay. at Universal College, Somenia. Wow. You've really taught the country with education. <laughs> now, you see, from that place, I was granted admission to Trinity because I was choosing the General Secretary of the SCM, Students Christian Movement. Okay. Uh, so all the secondary schools, the universities, the training colleges within Greater Accra and uh, Eastern regions, I was the General Secretary. Wow. And we held a uh, a conference at Somenia, which I was called to preach. Trinity College, University of, Cape, uh, of Ghana were coming, all six form schools were coming, and look at me, somebody from the heart of the forest, <laughs> coming to offer the maiden speech. Mm. I could not write anything on any paper. I prayed, I prayed. Three days to the time I could not even eat when I went to Dali. Oh. But suddenly the Lord Jesus did appear unto me. He stretched forth his hands upon me and strengthened me. Mm. So when the day was due, I had not written anything at all. But the Lord God, when I mounted the podium, gave me the message to give. 
I spoke, preached out the message, you are God. And uh, the principal of the Trinity College was so much touched that he gave me admission to Trinity at once. But unfortunately, uh, the Reverend Minister for uh, Methodist at Sumenia at that time was called J.G. Williams, outcast. Mm -hmm. He advised me against going to Trinity at that time. Okay. What was the reason? He said I was too young to, to be a pastor. <laughs> so I had to go to training college, have some experience there before I become a pastor. I, I'm intrigued here. I'm, 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 sorry, I'm interested in what the pastor, the advice the pastor gave you or Reverend gave you. Did you agree with him based on your age? Not because of my age. But why? But I agree because mm -hmm. he took me for a child. And if your father is advising you, you cannot say no. Okay. So I obeyed okay. him as a father because he adopted me as a father. He treated me as a, as a, a child. child. So would you say you don't, you don't believe that um, you need to attain a certain, certain level see, of age? A certain level of thinking. Mm. It's very, very necessary so far as uh, the pastoral work is concerned. Okay. Okay. Because your life must be emulated by the people, mm. must be an example of the life of Christ. Mm. And so, if you are young, sometimes you cannot think rationally. There are a lot of things the youth do. And uh, they bring this grace hmm. to Christ. The body of Christ. Okay. And to the church. Thank you very much. I, li I like that explanation. So let's continue. So he advised you to go to train college. And yes. Then and then uh, he recommended Wesley College for me. Okay. Uh, from school, from Somenia, I went to Wesley College, attended the interview, and I was uh, offered admission. The first Sunday we went to church. I, I did not know how all this happened. I was called upon to, to give a sermon. Wow. And after the sermon, I was made the president of a preaching band. Wow. Somebody like, um, Samuel Amankwa, okay. Richard Amankwa, they are all, I don't know why, I know they are still with the church. They, they are uh, uh, pastors of the Methodist Church, Reverend Ministers. Uh, there were people who followed me. Primpa Manso, who was um, the moderator of Presby, mm -hmm. was one of you that followed me. So with, with him, we preached in mo almost all the schools in Kobasi. Oh. And in some of the Methodist churches and Presbyterian churches in Kobasi. Okay. And sometimes we went out to preach openly in Kumasi. That was from 71. From 71. Okay. And so I left. At this, at this time, has, uh, uh, have you started St. No, 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 no. Okay. After completion, uh, I was posted to. Why is so angry area? Yeah. I told them for two terms, and I was transferred to a central Methodist school.
school. Then I, I applied for admission to pursue training college because um, they had established a great diploma in our Greek there. After going to Wesley? Yes. Okay. So I was offered admission. So I had my training in agriculture at first school. Unfortunately, we were the first batch and the last batch. Why? Well, after we had completed, new schools, agrig schools were opened. And so they separated the agri completely from the training college. Okay. Uh, and so uh, the school, the agri department was closed down. So you couldn't complete? No, I completed. Oh, okay. It was and a year after, course? No, no, it was a two year course. Okay. After we had completed, mm -hmm. they closed it down. Okay. So there, I taught in some schools, but finally, where I spent much of my time was as a Gregor secondary school. I was the Greek science master. Okay. In fact, boy, he was one of my students. Wow. Those I taught at Greek science. Uh, I was there until eighty. Yes. The reason why I came down here was that during all those periods, our people were not performing well here. Academically, get, getting through the common entrance and then even the MSLCE, they were not getting through effectively and getting admission to secondary schools became a problem. And so I felt the need to come and offer assistance to my own people. So I took a transfer, came down to that year. So here, I established the continuation school. Okay. And I was made the head, first headmaster. Well, what, 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 what was the continuation school about? It was. Um, uh, technical, like a technical okay. uh, department of the school, okay. where the children learn uh, something practical. Okay. okay. And so, yeah, sometimes sometime you can look into that camera too. Okay. That's your your main camera. <laughs> okay. And so, we started very well. But I had a confrontation with the headmaster, the head teacher of the school, because he was not permitting me to do what I wanted to do to help the children. Okay. Based on that, I decided to come and establish my own school. Okay. The birth of St. Paul's. The birth of St. Paul's. That was 1981. Okay. So I went and registered the school. And uh, while I was at Asanko, I built a house here. So I decided to use the house to start the school. The school. So we we started off. Can you tell us how many people you started? My first the class was six in number. Wow! But we had about uh, twenty in the other departments, in other classes. Okay. Because I started class three. Because I'll pick people from, what from school? other schools. My own children who were with me at Asang as started school there. So when we came down here, they attended veterinary school. But I decided because I saw how low the academic performance was and I felt that I had an assignment to do. So it was my aim 
to bring education to their doorsteps of the people. Okay. And so, when I established the school, I started from class one to class three at the same time. And my children were in class three. Okay. Which of your children were the first student to start oh. St. Paul's? Um, Lilian Aswa. Okay. Uh, and then uh, Jonah Jim. Okay. Then Gladys Ampo. Okay. Angelina Ampo. Okay. Um, uh, Goku. What? <laughs> Okay. It's okay, yeah. but uh, apart from your own children, which of your first batch of students who started St. Paul's, can you, do you remember? The you know? first batch? Yeah. Well, um, I think... Apart from your children, if you can... Apart from my children, <laughs> uh, people who were here, one is uh, Madame Sarah, Sarah Kweku. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we had... Uh, Um, there was one Paulina, okay, and then uh, one Rita, uh, here at Adiasu, we had uh, Eric Tando, okay, Mabu Kwasibru, Kwasibru, okay, we also had uh, um, Sylvester Afum, okay, uh, okay, it's okay. Maybe as as we go on, some other name will cross us. So then, St. Paul's was started in 1981. 81. Okay. Uh, 10th October mm -hmm. 1981. 10th October. 10 10. Yeah. Okay. I get it. 1981. That was time we started. But I had decided within me that I wouldn't let the children go through to Form 4, middle school Form 4. But I was going to prepare them that when they are in P6, they will be able to ride the MSLC. Wow. So within three that years. That was a radical decision. Yeah. I decided to work very hard to get this uh, student through. Lo and behold, they wrote the exams and they will surprise you. They were the best in the whole Western region hmm. and probably the third within the country. Wow. For the stations, they did excellently well. And that got the, brought the school a name. So people started coming down here from all over the country. I quite remember there was uh, a man who was, uh, I think, deputy governor, who was in charge of the rubber banks. That was the time they were starting the rural banks. Mm. He came here. And then when he saw the school and he interacted with the students, he said, wow, why did you establish this school in the heart of the forest at such a place? If the school were to be in Accra or Kumasi, oh, you would have enjoyed it because all of us would have brought our children sure. there. Even though I'm in Accra, if your school were to be somewhere where it was so easily reachable, I could have brought my children. Mm. But because you look at here and Accra, the yeah. distance, there were roads were deplorable. And there were, the roads were deplorable in stage. And uh, 
you could not easily write down to that dear so. Yeah. In fact, that reminds me of how the middle, uh, sorry, the clinic here came about. Yeah, that dear so clinic. That dear so clinic. Okay. Would you believe that I was the brain behind the establishment of the clinic? Tell us. And with my that. own money, I worked out the establishment of the clinic. Tell us a bit about how it came about. That time I was teaching at Asanko. But I heard open that uh, repatriating mothers died on the way mm. when they were being taken away to either. Yeah, so uh, that time we had no hospital. Okay. There was there was no hospital. They had to go to Asankarawa or Asapo. Asapo, yeah. And you, you could uh, see how our roads were in those days. And it, it made these women die on the way. Wow. And I was so uh, saddened and I had sympathy. So I felt there was something I must do. I came down to that there to organize some people. The continuing here at the moment was one of the young men I gathered together. Mm. And then I came to sell my idea to them that I want us to build a, a clinic for Suyama. So the old uh, Methodist church building, which was also used as a school. That was where we started our schools. Mm -hmm. Class one to class six. You mean St. Paul's? Yeah. No, 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 no. I myself attended school there. Oh, okay, okay. I get it. Class one yeah, to so class you're, you're six. Your alma mater. <laughs> so I decided to renovate that building so that we could use it. That oh, was okay. immense era. So I spent all that I could. And then with the help of this young man, we started working on the body. When we had almost completed, I was financially handicapped. And I decided to call upon the community to offer assistance. All this through, we had not even informed Nananu of what we were doing. So that was the right time for me to go to the palace, meet Nananom, and then tell them what I had started to do. I led them to the place, they came and saw it. They were fascinated. They felt that, no, there is somebody we have to support. So, we asked them that they should permit us to take a little money from the community and complete the building. It was okay. accepted. So I established Youth Development Association for Suyama. Youth Development Association for Suyama. I'm sorry if I knew we were going to go through this and I could have sought for uh, some, some of the documents. At least receipts we were using mm. because I still have some receipts with me here. Maybe after after the, uh, the interview, we'll take pictures of them. So, definitely, uh, they agreed. We had not completed one and then started Give it as a tough time, I think we simply been there. Yeah. But we stood firmly. Uh, when we completed, the regional medical officer was Benter Angel. And he was also a politician. Hmm. He was with the Action Party. And because he man's party, PMP was in power. I had to use my knowledge 
to compel him to come and you know, open the hospital. the hospital for us. Because he was playing dilly dally with you, with me. So I went and reported to the regional minister and then on reported to the uh, minister of health that the people had completed this building. We were calling by the angel to come and uh, inspect it and then open the clinic for us. And because he's not with a party, he is not coming. And that will make the people angry. Mm -hmm. If the government could not help us, we have helped ourselves. You just come and open the clinic for us, inspect and open the clinic for us. You are not coming. And uh, it was a very serious issue. The government in power took it seriously. He was called to attention and they were giving ultimatum to come and open it. To come and open it. They gave him two weeks. If he had not come, he, would count, count, he should count himself out of office. Mm. Incidentally, the urinal had not been built. Not. And uh, I came quickly and called uh, Masons to come and help me. They didn't. So I myself took my, uh, my students. That time, by that time I had come to the, to the address here okay. to establish the, uh, no, 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 no. The continuation school. continuation school. So with the students of the continuation school, they helped me to build the urinal. The urinal. I had not built any, any structure before, but I, uh, I did it and people were surprised. Yeah. And so when he came, everything was set. In fact, my wardrobe in my room was taken to the hospital. Oh, wow. And uh, we had to provide some drugs and so on from the money we collected from the people. And uh, we came and opened the hospital. The hospital that was uh, uh, 80, 80, I think 80. Well, we started work at well. I was at uh, some school, but cool. well, we completed when I had moved here transfer to Daniel's place. Mm -hmm. And so that is how uh, the hospital came about. Mm -hmm. Now let's go a bit uh, into St. Paul's and then move on from there. So St. Paul's, you yeah, started. Yeah, from that time, I said I had a problem with the head teacher of the continuation of school. The continuation school. Mm -hmm. For that reason, I came and used my own dwelling place to start the school. And after our first performance, we had a very good name. We carved a good name for the school. Mm -hmm. And so people were coming all over from places, from coming from Takurade, wow. Asenkrewa, uh, Takwa, uh, Kumasi, uh, Yosu, Enchias or Enchi, they were all almost all here. Mm -hmm. They were here almost all the time. And I think still they, they, they are, are here. still here. Mm -hmm. You see, and that gave the school a name. Mm -hmm. But uh, since that time, the school was, uh, uh, we started well. So we were moving very, very fast academically. Mm -hmm. There was no school in Ghana. The excellent schools in Ghana that my children could not have at Nishi. Mm -hmm. Always at Mota, uh, Adisado, 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 Ad
And so on. I say to two, uh, Presbyterian. That's Antoine. That's Antoine. Almost all my ladies went to Yas Oh, okay. <laughs> you see, and then uh, Mampon, uh, St. Monica. Mm -hmm. See, so that was how the school carved a name for Esau. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we are still performing well, but not to the mm -hmm. level we were in those days. Yeah. Uh, so we are not too bad. I think we'll, we'll come there, but I think in the year 2009, yeah. a group of young boys were sitting somewhere and were discussing how now performance of private schools in general in Adidas were coming down. And I was giving reasons like now there's constant light in every home, every home is getting a TV <laughs> set, oh, yeah, yeah, that, every home is getting a decoder. To watch the channels they want. Yes. Now mobile phone were also coming, so all of this were going to be distraction. Oh, distraction. Exactly. The exactly. So I said that that yes, is a community where we pride ourselves with academic excellence, especially the JHS exams and the SHS. But parents and school owners should embrace themselves for the sudden change in academic performance, and rather focus the energy. On something else because this thing that I've mentioned, constant electricity, availability of TV, and all of that are going to be competing with their books. And I think now you, you people are seeing the result. So now St. Paul's have made names. We have you have a lot of students all over the world. As oh, a matter of fact, your daughter Kwe Isia sent me a message um, this this morning that I I, I know she, she's wished you, but I she wish you. Happy belated birthday on the show for her. So, uh, Ais, I've done your assignment. So, now, um, with all the names that Simpos have made, now academic performance has gone down, not only for Simpos, you almost, for almost all the schools. Around. Yes. You, as a proprietor or the founder, how do you feel and what do you think is the solution? I am saddened. Mm -hmm. I'm saddened. Why? Because that had not been my Plus aim. Or your aim. Mm -hmm. My goal. No. It was always to have a the best. Ace, ace the best. And now but now I'm not getting it. So you could see that my heart will not the frustration. Be. How my heart will never be happy. So you know, look into your camera. <laughs> What's your camera like this? Yeah, <laughs> my heart will never be happy mm -hmm. because I'm not getting what will make me jubilate. Mm -hmm. My joy mm -hmm. is probably foiled, but I know it is not beyond repair. Okay, I know the Lord by His grace can lift up can lift up the school once again and then I know that things will be better in the very near future okay uh, one thing I've come to know is that you may not even know you may not even know that I started a secondary school here. Mm -hmm. You started a secondary school yes, on this campus? Yes, St. Paul's Secondary School. Wow. Here. Mm -hmm. That was 84, mm -hmm. 85. We had a secondary school here at that at St. Paul's. Wow. You 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 you, you seem to be too ambitious as a man. What was that fire in you? And and you were quite futuristic. Things that people have not thought of. Things that people have not thought of. You were thinking of. Where where did you get that energy, that you strength, see, and vision from? I 
from my infancy, I've been very creative. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said before, mm -hmm. before my secondary education, I had to create a lot of things for myself. Okay. myself. Mm -hmm. And so I was so ambitious. There was nothing I didn't do to make me earn Income. something. Mm -hmm. I was happy about what a young man was saying here mm -hmm. a few moments ago. Yeah. That practical education. Practical education was so needful. And uh, it's the cross through of Valencia uh, independence. independence. Mm -hmm. Because in those days, I could work very, very, very hard. Mm. Very, very, very hard. I go in for a day. I take, uh, what, what is it? What we call Adopa. Adopa. Good. <laughs> uh, contract to we. I'm not that old, but I've done it before. <laughs> contract, <laughs> contract to we. In somebody's farm. Somebody's farm. Mm. I was doing all these things. I was also weaving baskets. Probably I was the first person who also stretched. You know, Soroko Yuma. Yes. Good. The bed. The bed with grass, hay. So I prepared some, put them around the streets to sell. Okay. That was how I acquired money. Mm. So every time I sit down, I think about something to create. To make money. That will bring money. Mm. And so that was why my, my mind was full of creating, creating, creating. Okay. Because when you start education, now, you have the elementary. If you don't get the right secondary school to continue, the children might probably not reach anywhere. Mm -hmm. And they may fail to achieve the goal which you had set. Mm -hmm. so I decided to continue here so that they can achieve the goal I had in mind. But after they had stayed here for two years, and I was not getting teachers to support me, I and my wife then were the only teachers who were handling the subjects, all the subjects. Is it for Simpos or for the Simpos Senior High School? For the Simpos Senior High School. It was then the secondary school. Secondary school, okay. Uh, later on, we had about two other teachers to come and help. But we felt if care is not taken, we will do a disservice to the children. To the children. So I transferred them M block to Asanko. Okay. And because I taught there and they knew how effectively I worked. When they interviewed the children, they saw that the children were very good. Indeed, they even commented that how come that these children could do all these things? Because when they started school there, they were taking the first position, the second position, so on, until the end, before the original people were coming. The, the, the same post spirit. The same post spirit was within them. And it helped a lot. It helped a lot. Mm. And that has been in me ever since. Mm. You now, know, even at the moment, mm -hmm. Continue. I have some arrangements I've made myself. Okay. For body pains, for skin diseases. Yes. Okay. I try to think and create. The secondary school here is my brain child. That just was senior school, yes. which is where I completed my senior school. Yes. Had it not me, you wouldn't have gone there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> because I was I was posted to Hunivali Senior High School and yeah. 
my caretaker said, no, they can't take care of me in a boarding school. So I had to go and that's another story. Anyway, so would you say as a founder, as a pioneer of the first private school in that year, so would you say would, uh, aside the, the drop in academic performance, would you say you've achieved why you, you, Ooh, you, 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 you set up that journey? Really, really, I am thankful to God. Okay. Because I can boast of having well-educated men mm, and women from the school, men and women from the school, who are scattered all over the country, and some in foreign countries, mm -hmm. all performing very, very well. Medical doctors, engineers, bankers, and whatnot. Yeah. Pastors, ciao. Ciao. <laughs> That's the young man, 80 year old and a day young man with us here on Blacknificent Media. And uh, forgive us, we couldn't come live on uh, Facebook uh, to be uploaded this uh, night on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, so now you've established that uh, you are, your, your heart is at peace, that the, oh, the yeah. goal you set out to achieve by establishing the school has been uh, achieved. And now, um, let's go a little bit uh, into your life. This one will take a little bit back about setting, starting a family. Maybe the young men watching around the world will take some cues and lessons from, from, from that. Growing up, how did you um, venture into that space of you grow, you get to a point, then you need to um, pick up a life pattern and all of that. Can, can you t tell us a bit about yours? Well, uh, in my youthful days, I know much interest in humanizing. Okay. I quite remember when I completed middle school, I had never had any affair with any woman. And how, old, how old are we talking about? Well, in those days, I was around about 1920. Okay. 1920. And I had not had any affair with any woman. What, what was your, your basis? Was it your upbringing, my, financial, uh, my, or what? All uh, uh, fused together. Okay, your <laughs> upbringing, financial situation, <laughs> and all of that, okay? <laughs> that, that's, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I know when you go in for a woman, you have to cater for that person. Yes. And I had no money to do that. Okay. So why do I go in? Yeah, you are very responsible. Some people yeah. risk it. They they don't care whether they can take care of a woman and a child that can eventually can. They don't care. But you had a respect for yourself and for somebody's daughter and the child that can come in. And I think that, that, that what is. What do you do? That, that, you don't that, have any money. That's possible. So I waited. And the first time I even called a lady to my room, mm -hmm. uh, the lady was called Rosa J. Okay. I quite remember her name all right. It was a nurse. Okay. He came to my room, we sat down, we talked and talked and talked, conversed, and then he went out. <laughs> it's normal. It's normal. <laughs> It's, it's well normal. It, it happened three times. Mm, even in, in, 20, in, in 2022, it's still happening. So at your, at your time, you even did well. <laughs> yeah, one day he came to the room and we were conversing. He, he came with this uh, problem. In fact, he, he was here. Yeah, he trained as a nurse at Cape Coast. Mm -hmm. And when I tried to hear this, to wait. That is it. What, so what? I knew Akira was a frog. Yes. But I had never heard the word Adesit. 
Mm -hmm. So what is this? Say? Then after some time I investigated and I was told that it's toothache. Kaka. Oh God of mercy. <laughs> Okay, the frog idea. doesn't have teeth, so how can he be complaining of uh, toothache? This woman that I come from a, 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 a royal palace. The, the, the father was the Pampa Sohene of Kumasi. Oh, okay. At that time. No wonder. <laughs> so, how, 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 when you got the interpretation of the, the proverb, how did you then? I, I felt very, very bad and ashamed. Okay. <laughs> because what it, it meant was that you 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 give meat <laughs> to a frog, you can they can eat eat. Oh, so that was a meat has been said before me. In other words, you are referred uh, to uh, as uh, a toothless uh, bulldog. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I felt yeah. very very sad. I felt. Very, very sad. Mm. And. Okay, let's continue. And so he left okay. and went to Cape Coast. Okay. And that was the last time I met mm. her. Okay. Uh, it was years after before I had an encounter. Okay. But thanks be to God, when I completed Kosek, you know, well, let me tell you an incident that happened when I was at Wesley. Um, I was a young man, probably let me, let me definitely describe myself as a handsome young man. Handsome young man. <laughs> And I uh, know I was an evangelist, okay. preaching here and there. There was a lady called Dana mm -hmm. At that time, probably she was the most beautiful lady on campus at West Coast. Mm -hmm. Probably what I was doing, my preaching and what not, what do my academic performance, Drew her to uh, drew her closer to me. To you. So wherever I s sat, he was with me. I knew he had fallen in love with me, but also I felt it would be a shameful thing for me as an evangelist to propose to her. <laughs> <laughs> so I could not propose to her. Many uh, tutors. Proposed, he rejected them. You know, he, on you. He, he was a daughter of uh, Mr. Broker, who was then the headmaster of Pantepu. Mm. And look at me from the heart of the forest here. How can I call somebody like that to my house? And how can I meet her request? But, but she, she, has, she has given you oh, yeah, a blank, you, blank check. He so, has given the blank check, but mm -hmm. you must take a responsibility. Let's say you, you go in and he becomes pregnant. Mm -hmm. And you think because he has given you a blank check, he okay. will go scot free. Okay. No. You have to take the responsibility. And it will be against my Christian doctrine okay. that I should have such an affair. Mm -hmm. So, so, throughout my secondary education, I never had an affair with anybody. Any woman. Okay. So, at what time did you finally... Uh, my, my father, after some time, went for a lady. Now, let me go back a little. And then, somebody else also fell out with with me after my education there and I had an affair with her that would give me my first child. Okay. But the parents never permitted me to marry her. To marry her. What was the reason? Well they felt I was quite a poor boy. Jobless. Jobless. I was only 
uh, call it uh, Mr. Nobody. <laughs> I was Mr. Nobody. Mm. But later on, when I had completed Pusek, <laughs> my father married one Mary Osei okay. for me. Okay. And it was with her I had Beauty Aswa and Patricia Aswa. Okay. Our third born died in the womb. And probably that brought uh, a separation. Okay. So when I, the next time I had an affair was when I went to the secondary school to teach. Okay. Or where I met uh, my son's mother. Okay. He was also there to teach. And uh, that brought us together. Okay. It was with her I came down to that new school. Okay. To establish and settle here. Okay. Okay. I thank God none of my children had been left uncatered for. All of them, any child of mine, was cared for throughout this world. I, I felt what I went through, the pains and agony I went through, my children should not go through. That's great. But one thing I had in me, and they still living with me, is to help needy people. people because I had been very needy before mm. and I knew how painful it is it to be there. And so when I see somebody in need, I don't care wasting my last best one on a person, then I will go hungry. And these are some of the things that my children had never enjoyed or they felt they could not get the best from you or maybe because I was attending to the needs of other people, people. as well. Mm. I think that would, I think would you want to take this opportunity to uh, say something to them? So probably some of them might have have that pain in their head. Ah, our dad is thinking of other people and yeah. we were not getting what we think we're supposed to get. Yeah. Really? I'm sorry. So look at your camera. <laughs> <laughs> really, I'm sorry it happened that way. Mm. But I felt spiritually I had a responsibility to care for the needy because I myself was a needy person. Mm. So look into your camera. Okay. I myself was a needy person. Okay. So I'm sorry they had not grown to the, my level of thinking. Mm. And they felt I had cheated them. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry it happened that way. But if you bear with me, I was doing my God's assignment. All right. So, all of you kids, I hope today um, you heard it from Daddy why he did that. Let's quickly uh, try to wrap up. Now, St. Paul's have come, made all the names, students of yours all over the world. And yesterday you celebrated your 80th birthday. That's why the, the caption on today's interview is he is 80 years and a day old. He wants to be 120 years before he joins his ancestors. Um, you've already uh, explained why you think you can, you can be 120 and even more. more. Tell us a bit about yourself. How do you keep your, yourself healthy that has made you this handsome at age 80? Uh, well, one thing I do is that, uh, is that uh, normally mm -hmm. I feed on natural food. When you say natural food, what do you mean? What I mean is that crops that have been planted that have not been uh, 
we have not actually applied chemicals so, or okay. any other fertilizers and yeah. so on okay. to grow. Okay. But they grow naturally. Mm. Using the natural nutrients in the soil, soil. Mm. to grow. Mm. They are much healthier than and those who are uh, chemical fertilizers. Mm. And so every good agriculturalist will not want to apply fertilizers mm. to the crop or vegetables he wants to use himself. Okay. So that's so what I do. That's what I do. I eat a lot of leaves if I have them. Mm. And I eat a lot of fruits. Okay. And from my infancy, I never enjoyed eating too much uh, solid food. Okay. But I enjoy eating fruits like pineapples, uh, mangoes, uh, pear, coconuts, and things like that. Okay. And I, I could sometimes mash only the condomery mm -hmm. and pour oil on it, palm oil on it, and eat it just like that. Okay. And I become satisfied. Definitely, when you eat things like that, you grow stronger and stronger. Okay. And uh, I used to to play ball, okay. and I used to run, okay. and I enjoyed boxing. Okay. <laughs> uh, so always I had something to do okay. to keep me healthy. Mm -hmm. I quite remember '71 when my father was dying. How to run, I and my senior brother Joseph, how to run from Ladiasu to Patakro mm. to take help there mm. from somebody and then run back here. Mm. And we did it very, very short, in a very short period. Mm. I don't think we spent more than four hours okay. running to Patakro and back. And back. Wow. We did do that. Mm. That time I was very healthy and very strong. Mm. You might probably ask why am I uh, in this state? Why mm. am I in this state? Mm -hmm. It was because I was fighting for the creation of a district and then the constituency of Suyama. Mm -hmm that I had a lorry accident okay. that affected my waist mm. and my legs. Mm. 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 And that's why I am in this condition. Okay. I did not be so. I think I would have been one of the still strongest men mm -hmm. in town. In town. But you are, you are strong. Once your thinking faculties are strong, you are. So, um, yesterday, your children celebrated your birthday okay your 80th birthday for you how was the feeling like yesterday oh it was very fantastic the joy exceeded my probably expectation imagination mm -hmm. Because I was not prepared for any elaborate celebration. Mm. I said you shouldn't waste money on this. Mm. I just wanted to have my uh, uh, smashed yam or cocoa yam or plantain. Oh, okay. With my red oil and some and egg. some eggs. <laughs> and talk. Yes. And then probably uh, the Gokuya is called Ogo. Okay. And they are my favorites. Okay. And so I just one day when I have that and I eat, I become happy. Can mm -hmm. you tell me a funny story? Tell us. <laughs> when um, they wanted me to go to school for my infancy, I told them that because I loved eating Gokuya, uh, so I, tell, I told them I was not going to any school. I, I was going to farm, make a cocoa, cocoa yam farm. I won't go to school. <laughs> I wouldn't go to school. I want a cocoa yam farm. 
And uh, incidentally, I was uh, uh, what, uh, enticed to go hmm. by supplying me a toy. Ah. <laughs> they gave me a toy. They gave me a toy. And, 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 uh, and some eggs. I had, I was advised to go to school, and when I go, they will always give me a job. So, <laughs> so, so I thought, I thought it was an incentive. <laughs> what an incentive to nice me. one <laughs> <laughs> to propel me to, to go, go to, to school. school. <laughs> That's nice. Today, today, children will say they want iPhone before they go to school. <laughs> anyway, Master, uh, we are bringing this session to an end. Uh, yeah. We're going to go to talk to uh, about Kwame Kumar for the next 30 minutes back. Okay. Before we go, if there's anything that I have not been able to ask you, but you want to tell us, tell the world, because this thing is going to be there for children to come 100 years to watch. Is, is there anything you want to say that I haven't asked you? Well, there are a lot of things if I actually want to say mm. about my impact here mm -hmm. at that dear so mm -hmm. at Amomi mm -hmm. Wasa mm -hmm. Memphis mm -hmm. and Ghana as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think it will take a lot mm -hmm. of time. We'll, uh, we'll come again. We'll come another time to uh, look at your impact. Today is I've generic. already said that I helped with the establishment of the secondary school yes. here. Yes. Yes. The thoughts the actions, whatever brought the school to be, mm. had originated from me. Great. It was orchestrated by me. Mm. The school is here because I am here. Wow. Had it not been me, mm. that I'm seven as a counselor for Suyama, this school wouldn't have come. Wow. Because the government said, one district, one school. Mm -hmm. So when we reach your man, was one district. So the school supposed so to be school in was supposed to be at mm -hmm. And Brindu Secondary School was the one that was built. You see. Mm -hmm. I stood in and fought against that idea because NG is a, a, a paramountcy. And we also, uh, we are a paramountcy. And the dis distance between the Adiaso and NG. NG is far apart. And our road was, was no not much travel. Mm. And even up till now, it's not properly uh, uh, constructed. constructed. Definitely there is a problem. And how could you ask us to go to school at NG? Meanwhile, you said, the local people must be their students. Mm -hmm. It be originally it was not taught of boarding. The whole school were, were going to be day schools. Community schools. So how do we expect that these people to go to school at the NG? Mm. I took this on I put this on table. We spoke about it, debated upon it. And then the assembly accepted my proposition. Okay. But we had to work on it. So I was choosing to work on it. While Koguche uh, Aka yeah. was to work on the brain to okay. secondary school. Okay. So that was how it came about. And uh, when it was approved, we had to choose a place. We had to choose a place. Okay. And the place that was chosen, Mr. R.Y. Afum, he gave their family land. But it was, it was not large enough. So also I had to give part of our family land that shared boundaries with Mr. Mr. Afum, Afum. Mm -hmm. to add up so that we could have enough land for the school. For the school. So now, does government pay these two families? No, for using is, your land. Nothing give, is given to us. But something needs to be done about that. You uh, can. Uh, as at now, nothing is done about it. I was, I was. And they are not even showing appreciation. Uh, but I think the school ought to show appreciation. 
But I think but, you people, the families whose lands the school is on, need to take it up, maybe through legal means. Because okay. I, I can't have the saying that no matter how uh, good hearted you are, you can't give out to your wife as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yes. No. So, no, that, so no. Every, no, land, that, every no. land that a, a government is using anyway, government needs to uh, at least compensate the family for it. So, this one, uh, I will urge you once. You for, for your next 40 years on, on, on earth, use that to, to get something for, for your family land. Yeah, you, you, that's very, very important. Okay. That is school made me who I am today. And if it is your land, then you've sacrificed enough. Now you need to, you need to uh, eat some stuff for me. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, we are bringing everything to an end here. We've been talking to Reverend Dr. Colin Aswa, who is the founder of St. Paul's International School. And also a minister of the gospel, a pastor uh, in his own right. And as you, you, you can see and have heard from his own uh, mouth, he's done a lot. He's pioneered a lot of things in this town called Dadiasu and even in the whole country. I will be back here in Dadiasu to talk about his impact only. This one, we are talking about his life, childhood and everything. I love that, but I'll be back for that one. So um, thank you very much, uh, Reverend Dr. Polly, as well for sharing your life with us young men and women. We appreciate that. Thank you. And let me let you know that this interview was brought to you by Index Universal Life Insurance. They are in the United States of America. So if you are in America and you want the best of insurance, contact them. As I'm about to play their video, pick their, their contact number and talk to them. They've been in industry, in the uh, insurance industry for more than 100 years. They have over 62 plus insurance policies. And so contact them and get the best one. I tell you that what insurance does is that it makes you live your life like a God. What does a God does? God knows the future. If you have insurance and uh, you get accident, you die, you know that somebody is going to take care of all the expenses. So that future or as we call that chance yeah that be will be in that chance oh yeah oh insurance are doing that chance my name is Kobna Bibini Barry Mike and call me DJ Fuad we've come to an end of this session we'll be right back with the story of Kwame Kuma being a native of Swaman that is a go Ghana this year more America bro chimemu monfa masun femme na yeni ene ene e china hong komo unia wun imse E mrebi e chwe mna ye kase ubi ni adichie mu nse mu. Ane ayano kure. Nanso, mese wo se, in the 21st century, upe se wuhu adichie mu nse mu a ubi hu. Sa wode wuhu to index universal life insurance for soa. E san se, e bra ya di e bebo wu. E bra kwen shi abeto wu. Ana e bra uwu o abeto wu anawabu suye ni ibi no. E nwo biyara ni mu. Nanso se ya di ane ba. Na kwen shi ane to wa. Na wo wuone ba. Si ka wo de bebo wuhu bra no. Wu ni mu. Sa wu obi wu. Sa wu ni bi wu. Unim, enti yamsha kwa hami ni ya kusu ya. Omu nina au fuwa ya reda ayasabia. Kwa hami denise guniti e sutuwa jajwa. E sanse, unisi ya chiba mbiya. Nansu akusu ya aya relax. Sanse, odenuhu atu indes universal life insurance for so. Sedi mpa yifuwa kaa ya no. Sa wuko tuse ubi abo jise shia. Mwa sensuwe si udi ya hu. Nansu media me se, wuko tuse ubi abo jise shia. Na waba ya mpono. Indes universal life insurance. Aye insurance huwe juma. Ewa Amerika mamu bese enfie wa ha eni ya chirinye. Enti uni edinsa wa suwa. Esrobi ya ni mu. Yewa over 62 plus insurance benefits. Yewa life insurance benefit biti se. Compound interest benefit. Retirement benefit. Critical illness benefit. Access to money benefit. Samsung yewa death insurance benefit biti se. Tax free death coverage paid to your family. Funeral coverage benefit. Any be brea kika hon. Fre Indes Universal Life Insurance for a war. Plus 1720-589-3584. Indes Universal Life Insurance. Secure your future now.